Well, come on and join us while we take a walk around the garden. Well, the tomato trials are looking really good. Had some winners and some losers, which is normal. Look at those Shelby's right there. They're coming along really good. And I want you to look at these Hossinators. Man, these things are impressive. So uh, we got them some color coming along. Got a lot of green ones loaded up on the vines. And as we move over here, we look at the Pink Delicious, this heirloom type hybrid here that we're really impressed with this year. Uh, it has tested out really well. I was a little skeptical to start with, but uh, I think it's going to be a winner for us. Well, one little trick here I want to share with everybody is when your sweet corn is through, just as soon as you get through harvesting, get those stalks took care of. Now, here's the ideal way to do it is with a flail mower. But if you don't have a flail mower, use a machete, use a, uh, any kind of rotary mower, the main thing is to get those stalks cut down when they are green. They will deteriorate so much quicker. And also, you can go ahead and flip that bed and get something else planted there. Now, I've got this on drip tape, and I'm simply going to mow that corn down, and I'm going to give it a few days, and I'm going to plant right back in there without, you know, disturbing my drip tape. One little trick here, a lot of people have problems getting their drip tape about the corn. If you will cut them stalks down when they're green, the stalks in the root system rot out a lot quicker. And if you do pull your drip tape up, it is a lot easier to do that than when those corn stalks get dry. It's so a little tip for you there. Yellow doll watermelons coming along there. Yep, look at there. They got kind of probably, I think they're probably two, two and a half weeks out. I was a little late planting this, uh, this little patch here, but uh, they're coming along. Well, here's our lemon cucumbers. And uh, I don't grow these every year, but I grow them about every other year. Just love these things. Little round cucumbers there. And yeah, they do have a little bit of a lemon uh, flavor to them. A little hint of lemon in there. It's a good novelty cucumber. Uh, we got pole beans growing up there on our, on our trellis there. Don't have uh, a lot of them on this particular plot here and uh, they start to bloom. It's gonna be interesting to see how well they do in the heat because uh, I was a little late planting these pole beans. We got them trellised up nicely there. Now our lettuce uh, growing here in the summertime, I was really impressed with these two varieties. It's Cherokee and Coastal Star Romaine. They've took the heat well. And uh, we got some potato onions growing in one of the raised beds there. We move over to some of the more unique kind of strange stuff we're growing in the garden this year. And uh, look at those right there. This plant right here has edible leaves and flowers, which is kind of neat for me. I haven't tried any of them yet. It's on my to-do list. Look at there. Nice to mix it up in the garden a little bit. Try something different every now and then. And some of our zucchinis is pretty much playing, playing out a little bit. Yeah, these are the yellow zucchinis. I got where I grow as many yellow zucchinis as I do green. That one there probably makes some good zucchini bread. Yeah, we're over in the bean plot now. Look at this Eddie Mommy. This is a soybean that you eat as a snack. You see them putting on the pods there. Hadn't grown these in a few years, but this is a new seed for us this year, and I, I'm growing out this variety here. And we got our running butter beans. This is a new variety we're trialing. It's an old heirloom from Alabama there. It's a smaller butter bean, and uh, I'm excited about it. It looks like it's doing really good. The one thing about this is most time you make a better crop in the fall than you do in the spring. And we got some tapazio beans, and I've got another row of green blades, Hulse green blades, that I'm growing out to see how late in the summer I can grow these. See just how much heat they will take. And we got a cow horn okra. It's looking good. And right beside it is these tall corn stalks, which is Jimmy Red Corn. 
We planted our Jimmy Red a little later than we did our sweet corn to prevent cross pollination. I think I had about a two or three window, wheat window in there. And uh, we're gonna try some of these in the milk stage this year, eat them as roasting, roasting ears, and then we'll let the rest of them dry out on the stalk and grind that up for some cornmeal and some flour. Makes absolutely wonderful flour and cornmeal. The grits off these things are awesome. Look how tall these things got, man. They got about 10 to 11 foot tall. Making real nice stalk, they're looking good. Of course, they're on drip irrigation. We kept them watered, kept them fertilized well. And we got our sangria watermelons growing in our bigger patch out here. And they're coming along a little slower than I probably like. This one right here is looking okay. May have a little problems where it was pollination. But they're coming along. They're going to be probably another two weeks out. Boy, red curry squash. Uh, we grow, this is a hard squash, winter squash. Grow to row with this. Our nation watermelons have done absolutely wonderful. Got a great crop of these. They need to toughen off a little bit more. You see the vines are trying, trying to die back a little bit. That's normal. We'll need them to harden off a little bit. So if you want to feature your garden, send us some pictures in and we can feature your garden right here on the Hoss University page. There is a place right here so you can upload your pictures and you can be featured on a Hoss video.